Hi, welcome back to Therapy Designs. If you're new to this channel, my name is Kelly. This is my dog, Xander. And this channel is all about teaching you how to create print-on-demand designs using Canva. So if that is something that you're interested in, please do stick around. So in today's video, I'm gonna go over how to create this design right here. It says, say aloha to kindness. Um, it's very similar in terms of technique to what we did the other day with the this girl hits 10 i went ahead and used some different fonts you know gave it a cool layout gave it a cool clipping mask this is going to be a really fun design for you know spring summer spring break is coming so anything that you're looking more of like beachy tropical this is also, you know, great for adults or kids. Um, I got this idea because my son just had Kindness Week at school, and I know kindness is another big niche. Um, you do have to check for trademarks. So right now, Say Aloha to Kindness is not trademarked. So it's a cool cross niche between sort of that, you know, Hawaiian vacation feel and the kindness niche. So if you would like to learn how to do this design, go ahead and stick around. So as always, we're going to go ahead and start with our blank backdrop. This is 4,500 by 5,400 pixels. I will be designing for black today, so I'm just going to go ahead, click on my blank document. I'm going to go up to the top left-hand corner where it says background color, and I'm going to be selecting black. And then from here, I'm going to be making a mostly text-based design, but I'm going to start with a little element. So for this design, I'm just going to write, say, aloha to kindness. And so I do want to show you that there are some pre-made um, words that are really cool in the element section and aloha is one that we're going to be looking for. So if I go over to the left hand side of the page, I'll go up to where it says elements. If I click on that, I can go ahead and do a search for anything I want. Up here, I'm just going to go ahead and write aloha and see what comes up. And here we can search by photos, we can search by graphics. For this one, I'm going to go ahead and select graphics. And so you can see right now a lot of kind of pre-made graphics for the word aloha have come up. So sometimes if you're looking to make a text-based design, you can go ahead and search for text on the, on the elements section and search for graphics of text. And so you can get some really cool um, graphic text that way, as opposed to just creating your own. And so I'm going to be using one of these elements in combination um, with some text. And so if I scroll down, there's a lot of different fun um, things that come up for aloha. Some are just words and then obviously some are more like just Hawaiian tropical designs. And you know, you can use this for inspiration to create some of your own shirts. These are great for tank tops, great for summer or spring vacation. Spring break is coming up. So it's a good time to start thinking about some spring break type designs. Um, so as I'm scrolling down here again, I see some words for aloha, some more. And you can scroll down for a while, check everything out. I already know what I'm looking for, so I know it's a little bit down here. I might have to scroll for a while to find it. Um, but I do know what I want, and I know it's here. Again, there's another aloha. So sometimes what you want won't always be at the top. Sometimes you do have to scroll down a while to find what it is you're looking for. So go ahead and be patient, obviously. Um, I know time is money, but you do also want some quality designs too. So it is a good idea to be patient and to really look to see what's available. So here's the one that I want right here. It says Aloha. I really think that that looks cool the way it is and I like the angle and all of that. So I'm gonna put it on the page there. Now I can always go ahead and change the color too. So I'm not really loving the red. I'm gonna go ahead and just make that white for now and I'm gonna do an all text white design and then what we can do if we want to is put sort of a gradient clipping mask over it and it'll give it sort of a, a tropical or sunset kind of a look to it and so that's kind of cool. So now that I have the graphic that I want as my main graphic I'm going to go ahead and pull up a few different text boxes. So I can click anywhere on my page that I want and hit the T on my keyboard that'll pull up a text box there. And so the first word I want is just going to be the word say because I'm going to put say aloha to kindness. So I'm gonna go ahead and change this to white because right now it's black, I can't see it. So if I come up to the top where it says text color, I can click there and then I can go ahead and collect, click any color I want. And so right now I'm just gonna change my text color to white so I can see it. And so I'm gonna put that right there. I'm gonna say, here's Aloha. I'm gonna click T on the keyboard again. This time I'm gonna put the word two. I'm gonna bring that down here. And then one more time, T on my keyboard. And I'm going to go ahead and write kindness. 
And there we go. So right now I have something that says, say aloha to kindness. And so this is kind of the layout I'm gonna go with. And so now I'm gonna go ahead, pick some fonts, and then we're gonna throw in some flourishes. We're gonna throw in a little mask and we're gonna make this a really fun design here. Now, <laughs> I'm holding my dog right now. I don't know if you can see him. This is Xander. He's been barking a lot this morning because he's being a bad boy right now. <laughs> and so I'm trying to hold him so that he doesn't bark through the whole video, but that's why my other hand is a little bit full. He has to say, hi, buddy, hi. Okay. So let's go ahead and pick some fonts here. So I'm gonna click on the word say. I'm looking for something sort of scripty, something that looks like it will go with this Aloha. It doesn't have to match the font exactly, but you do want it to have a similar um, sort of style. So it has to be sort of scripty. It has to have a certain amount of thickness to it. So it's not too thin, but not too bold because you really want everything to look like it's gonna flow. Now up here, you can go ahead and do a search um, for different types of, of fonts. So I can put handwriting, I can put script, um, I can put cursive, I can put um, display. So those are all good searches. I'm gonna go ahead and just click on script right now and it's gonna show me some different script style fonts. And you can just go ahead and start clicking through them and see if you find one that you think kind of looks good. And so you can spend a long time going through fonts. If you've done this a lot, you may know certain fonts that you like more than others. It's always good to have kind of a list in your head of the types of fonts that, that you like or that you use maybe more often for certain types of designs. So I already know, that one's kind of cool. I already know which fonts that I want because I've already kind of looked at this ahead of time just to save some time. So the first font that I want, and this might have been one that I got from Creative Fabrica, so you may not already have this from Canva itself, but let's see. Oh no, this is a Canva one. Rumble Brave, and I know that that's actually on here. So let's go ahead, there it is. Rumble Brave script. So that is the, that is the first font that I wanted. I think it looks really nice. I'm gonna put it somewhere here. I'm gonna do some, some different design styles to it, but I'm gonna go ahead and leave that there. And then Kindness, this is another one that I also wanted in a script font. And so again, I can start looking at different scripts and they don't have to be the same. So I could go ahead and use um, the Rumble Brave again, and it'll look something like that. Or I can look for something different. And you know, if I want different, um, different fonts for each word. For this one, I did already find which one I wanted. This one was one that I got off Creative Fabrica and it was called, let me look, I wrote some notes, Wildcats, Wildcats. And so Wildcats right there, boom. And so I really liked the way that that looked there. I'm liking the way that's coming along. And then one more, I like the two, this one doesn't have to be, um, in a script, I actually kind of like the way that looks. So I'm just looking for a pretty simple font that I think would look good with that. Um, you can do anything you want. I went ahead and used one of the ones that again, I downloaded from Creative Fabrica. So there's a lot of them that I have used in the past that I really liked. Um, this was another one. Let's see if I can find it here. That was pretty basic. Not that one's a little bit too big. It was something pretty similar though, something simple. Let's see if I can find the one that I want. I know this is a little tough because I'm still holding my dog. Um, <laughs> he's making things a little bit difficult this morning. Let's see. I'm just gonna go ahead and do a search for it because I wrote that one down too. So coupled together is the one that I was going to use. So I'm just gonna go, here it is, coupled together regular. Perfect. And so something like that. So, so far I like the way this looks. I've got the words so that they kind of look like they flow together. They kind of look like they piece together. Now, because the Aloha has a nice curve to it, I'm gonna go ahead and curve some of these words as well. So for example, say, I can go ahead and put a little bit of a curve to it by going up to where it says effects. These are some text effects. I can go down to the bottom where it says shape and I can put a curve on it. And then I can adjust the curve as much or as little as I want. So it can be just a little bit of a curve, something like that. And again, I can always sort of play with the angle of the curve too. So if I want it to sort of look like it's kind of rounding up, I can do something like that. And then I have kindness, which again, I can curve 
any direction I want. So if I wanted to take effects and curve the kindness too, I can curve it down so that it looks like it's sort of opening up. I can curve it the other way so it looks like it's sort of kind of closing that gap. And so lots of different ways that you can play with this and then angle it to make it sort of look cool, look like it goes. I don't like the angle there. I actually think I liked it opening up a little bit better. That way I can put a little element in here. So let's go ahead and make the curve the other direction. And I'm gonna give it a little bit of an opening curve like that. So something like that looks pretty cool. And I can go ahead and make it bigger, smaller, you know, however I want here. I want it to fill the page. And so different places I can put it to try to figure out the way I think it might look nice. Something like that looks pretty cool. I can bring that in just a little. So I'm liking the way that that looks there. And again, I might want to throw some elements on here. So now to make it look a little bit more Hawaiian, I'm going to go ahead and let's just go with a lot of these have a nice flower, a nice hibiscus flower. So for example, here's a nice hibiscus flower and I can make that white as well. There it is. And so I can throw some different hibiscus flowers in some different places. And again, I can size them and angle them and kind of put them wherever I want to give it a unique look. So there's one flower. I can just go ahead up here and search hibiscus. There it is. Okay, and so there's a lot of different ones I can go with. So that was one, and I'm looking for something that's pretty much that style. So here's another one that has a similar style, and I can change the colors up top so I can make this one all white as well. And so maybe I want to put one over here because I think that looks pretty cool. So something like that looks nice. And then, you know, I can play again however I want. I can put another one down here. And so you can have some fun with it. Let's see, what did I do? I put one more kind of over in the corner here, sure. I think what I did is maybe I had that a little bit more like this. Gives me a little bit more space to put one more flower over here. So let's do that. Let's find one more flower that looks nice. Maybe this one here is a little different. Again, I can change that color to white. And I can bring this one up in the corner just to sort of fill this space here. Right, so I'm trying to fill most of the screen. I'm trying to kind of give it a little bit of a, a full look. Again, I can play with the angles here too to make them sort of angled however I want. However I need to to make it look like it's sort of filling the the spot that I need it to fill. And so, so far, so good. I like that. Now, I'm also thinking of putting a little flourish down here. So the Aloha has this nice little curve to it. We can put some curved lines down here. So Canva has some nice flourishes that you can use. So I can just put curved lines or even just curve and see what comes up. So here's some curved, I can get curved lines. I can get some nice decorative lines. You can put decorative lines. Um, I think I can even write in something like flourishes and see what comes up. Ooh, flur. Let's see if I spell any of these right there. There's some nice flourishes that you can use. And so there's a lot of really fun ones there too. Some are a lot more in depth than others. Some are pretty simple. So again, if I was looking for something that looks like it might go with this, here's a nice curve and I can make this one white. And so it looks a lot like that other curve there. And so again, I can play with these. Oops. So something like that could look good or I could go ahead and take this whole thing and maybe flip it horizontal so the curve is going the other way. Oops, made another sale and I could do something like that. Or maybe I want it to curve down like that one. Again, I can flip vertical and try one more time. And so lots of different ways that you can play with some of these flourishes if you want to, to sort of give them 
a nice unique look and so something like that looks pretty cool and again this has some little leaves coming off of it so if I wanted to try to match that a little bit again I could go for some tropical leaves oops it's a little tough to type when I've only got one hand here because the other one's holding the dog still <laughs> um, and I'm scrolling down lots of different tropical leaves. So those all look pretty cool there. I am looking for something that I can just sort of select the color on. So I am looking for something that's a little bit more sort of like that. I want it to be more of just a um, silhouette style. Now, again, if I'm putting a clipping mask on this, it really doesn't matter if it's a silhouette style or not because the mask would just cover up the general shape. And so it doesn't really matter if there's anything else on it. But I might want to make a, one of these that's literally just white or just have the ability to change the color. So if I want to have the most um, versatility, I'd like it to be something that's a silhouette where I can just sort of change the colors that way. And I mean, I can do something like that pretty simple. I could do one more if I can find another one and just sort of do a very similar thing to what was done above. So again, I was looking at leaves. I wasn't quite finding exactly what I wanted, but let's say I was to do this leaf right here. So I do like the shape of this leaf. Now, again, if I put a clipping mask, it really doesn't matter what color the leaf is because a clipping mask will just take the shape of the leaf and that's all there is to it. But if I wanted to make an all white design, then I would care about the color of the leaf. And so if that's the case, then one way I can work with this to make it a silhouette is to use some of my photo features on it and I can just go ahead and change the color of it that way. So I'm going to put it where I want it. And so let's say I put it right here. And now let's say I want that to be all white. So no worries. I can, oops, if I can click on it, I can click on it, come up to edit image. I'm going to go ahead and use duotone. And when I use duotone, I can select the colors. So here, what I can do is cl uh, click on the highlights and the shadows and I can make them both white. And by making them both white, I have now effectively made a silhouette. And so now I have my silhouette shape. And so that is one way I can get around not finding the silhouette that I want is just by using duotone and then I can change the color entirely. And then from here, I can you know move the leaf around, resize it, whatever I want. And so now it's got a similar look to that. If I wanted to put these little circles here, like this has the little dots, I mean, that's an easy enough thing to do as well. I can just click anywhere on my page. And if I click C on my keyboard, it will pull up a circle. So C on your keyboard will pull up a circle, which I can then change to white. And I can go ahead and shrink down as small as I want. And so I've got a little dot there. And then I can put my dot again something like that wherever I want. And so I could put a few dots there. Now, right now it's really small and hard to work with. One way around that is to go ahead and zoom in. So at the bottom of your page, it'll say something like zoom and it'll say 10%. I can zoom way in so it's nice and big for me. And so that's one way I work with small spaces is just to do a little zoom. And then from here, all I can do is click on my circle. And now if I hit Control D on my keyboard, it will duplicate that circle. And so that is one way I can work with it. I can go ahead and then I can make these a little bit smaller if I want to make, you know, sort of itty bitty smaller circles like that. And I can do it one more time, hit Control D, maybe make one more circle, put it here, maybe shrink it down a little bit. And so now I've got sort of big, little, smaller. And so I can play with the, oops, the size of the circles there. And I can also play with the placement of the circles too. So I can use the keys on my keyboard if, if you're having difficulty with the mouse. Sometimes using just the keyboard keys can be an easy way to adjust things. Yep. Yep. And so something like that, move my, use my keyboard keys to move it over. And so you can see how I can whoop, kind of create some circles like that. So you can play around with it and you can add some circles, whatever you want. Those are a little bit big, but you get the idea of how you could do that. 
And so you can do all sorts of different flourishes just by using some of the different wave lines or using some elements. Again, C on your keyboard um, will get you a circle. R on your keyboard would get you a rectangle. So if you wanna work with shapes, all you have to do is click that on your keyboard. Control D will duplicate any shape exactly the way you have it. So it's easier than just constantly resizing if you've already made it kind of the size you want. And so right now I've got a pretty cool design, say, say aloha to kindness and i like the way it is so we could keep this exactly as is right now and this would make sort of a cool um i'm gonna make that a little bit bigger so it fills the space it would make a cool design um just by itself so just white on black and that could be a cool design in and of itself so you may save one version like that and then you might do a few different versions with some different colors or some different clipping masks so I could take this and make them each individual colors and just do it that way. Or I could do a gradient mask over the whole thing, which is what I'm gonna show you to get sort of a gradient look of colors. So like I said, one way would just be to keep it all white. It looks cool like that. Another way might be to take each of these individual elements and sort of make them different colors. So I could do that obviously, and it would look something like this if I was to sort of do some elements that way. So you can kind of see the way that that would look if I made each thing a different color. And of course, so I could go through and make all different color things. And that looks pretty cool by itself. Leave it all white, of course, is an option. But what I'm going to show you here is how to do a sort of a sunset gradient clipping mask on it, which I think will look kind of cool. So I'm just going to go ahead and switch them all back to white. And I'm going to go ahead and save this as a mask. So I'm going to title it up here. It says, say, I'm just going to put Aloha to kindness, and I can just go ahead and put frame because that's what it's going to be. I'm going to download it. I'm going to hit uh, transparent background. It's a PNG, and I'm just going to hit download, and I'll give it one second. And then we're going to go ahead and look for a gradient mask that we like. Um, so one sec here. Perfect, okay. And so now I'm just looking for a gradient. So I can come back over to where it says elements and now I'm just gonna do a search. Um, so I can put gradient, I can put gradient background um, and you can search graphics, you can search photos. So each is gonna give you slightly different um, variations. So you can look for different colors that way. Graphics will give you something a little bit different. So some of these are kind of cool. I like the way that that one looks sort of the red into the yellow. So I'm looking for something like tropical or sunset colors. I mean, I can put tropical or I can put sunset gradient and sort of see what comes up. See if I get anything that looks a little better. Here's one that's a little bit more splotchy, less of a gradient, more splotchy. This one I really like here. So this one does give me that sort of e sort of yellow to purple tropically. I do like that one. And so I think that is the one that I'm gonna show you guys. Yeah, let's just use this one. <clears throat> so this is the gradient I'm gonna use. I'm gonna close that down. I need it to be in front of everything. So if I right click and I put bring to front, it should bring it in front of everything. If not, you might have to do it a couple of times. And then I'm gonna take this gradient and I'm gonna pull it over the entire page so that it covers everything. Now here I can still go ahead and change um, some of the saturations, the contrasts. So if I want to make it a little bit more saturated so it's a little brighter, I can do it that way. If I want it to be a little lighter because maybe I want it to really pop on the black background, I don't want it to be so dark, but maybe a little bit lighter, I can do it this way. I can add some contrast if I want it to really go from light to dark a little bit more. And so I can play with some of this right here before I even put it on. And again, I can play with this afterwards too, but let's go ahead and say I like that gradient there. I'm gonna just go ahead and put gradient frame or sunset gradient frame. I'll put sunset gradient frame. Perfect, oops, spelled it wrong. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and download this again and I can just click download. And then what we're gonna do is jump over to Photo P, which I've showed you a lot of times, great for clipping masks because it is super quick, super easy, super free, which is what everybody likes. Um, so once this gets all uploaded, I will show you. We're just gonna go ahead and put photop.com, just open a new page, and it will bring you to, I'll show you one sec. Perfect. 
and it will bring you over to this page right here. So you put photop.com into your browser. This is what you should get. From here, you can just click open from computer. It's gonna pull up your downloads. From there, you're gonna go ahead and put your say aloha to kindness frame and click open and it will load it for you. And so here it has my frame right there. And then I'm gonna come up to the top left-hand corner where it says file, I'll click on that. I'm gonna click open in place and then it's gonna pull up your downloads again. You can hit sunset gradient frame now, open that and it should put it right on top. Now, just for some troubleshooting, because I know people have had trouble with this before, on the right side of the page, you can see these two layers, okay? So the layer that's above, on top should be the layer on top. So right now my sunset gradient is on top, my background is underneath. If I was to click on this and drag it down, now I have my say aloha to kindness on top and my gradient underneath. So you can move these around. What you want is for your sunsets to be on the top, okay? You can also notice that right now my sunset one is highlighted. If I click on backgrounds, now background is highlighted. For this to work, you have to be you know, doing the effect on the layer that you want. So right now what I want is to click the sunset gradient. It should be on top and it should be selected. And that's the one that we're gonna use for a clipping mask. So now I can come up to the top, move over to the right where it says layer, click that. There's a drop down. about halfway down, it will say clipping mask. If you click on that, it should automatically put your clipping mask on your frame. And so it should be that quick and that easy. You should be able to do this in a matter of seconds. And then all you have to do is export it. So you can go to file, halfway down, it'll say export as. You're gonna go over and select PNG. Give it a second and a little box will pull up. There it is. It'll have the title, say aloha to kindness. Um, it'll have your original dimensions, which still should still be 4,500 by 5,400 pixels, PNG, and all you have to do is click save. And it will automatically save it, and then you can jump right back over to Canva, and it really should be that quick and that easy. Now I am back on Canva. Now right now it took my gradient and it set it as my background. Anytime you have a photo that is larger than your frame, if you click out of it, it will automatically set that to your backdrop. So right now, instead of a black backdrop, I now have this colored backdrop. If you wanna get rid of that, all you have to do is right click on it about um, all the way down to the bottom. It'll say detach image from background. You can click that. It will detach your image and you can pull it right out. And now you're back to your original. Okay, so that is how you would get rid of that. So I still have my white version that again, I could put up anytime I want. But now we're gonna go ahead and upload the one that we just made. So on the left hand corner of my screen, again, I'm gonna go to the tabs here. This one says uploads and I can hit upload files. It will pull up my downloads and I can just go ahead and upload the image that I just made. Okay, perfect, so there it is. I'm gonna add a page here and I'm just gonna drag and drop this onto my new page. I'll close this. And so here is the design that we just made. It says, say aloha to kindness. And from here, you can go ahead and resize it, center it, put it wherever you want. So you don't have to worry about if you know, your design appears perfectly centered or perfectly sized or anything like that. Because once we save it as, a, as sort of its own image, I can move it around and resize it however I want. So at this point, I can go ahead, get it centered in my frame, make it as big or as little as I want. I do want it to fill up pretty much the whole thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and stretch that way out there. And so that looks pretty good. It looks pretty centered. I can always use my arrow keys to move it over. I can use my rulers and guides on the top and sides of the page to see where center is, to make sure everything looks centered or to line things up. So those are always a good tool that you can use. And so that looks pretty cool right now, just how it is. You could always put an outline around it if you want, but sometimes the outlines make it a little tough to read. So if you can use light enough colors that it'll pop without an outline, that's always a little bit better depending on your design. Again, I could still play with the colors here, so I could go back up to edit image, and if I said, oh, it's still a little too dark for me, I could still make it a little bit lighter. I could still pop that saturation a little bit more, and so I can still play with this. I can still play with the contrast a little bit and kind of get rid of the midtones, bring the midtones back in, and so I can play with that however I want, okay? I could also still use some of the um, like duotone 
or sorry, not duotone, I could use color mix to get some different colors. And so some of these look pretty cool too. So for example, if I wanted to do, let's go with this one here, I can show you. I can click Arctic and it's just gonna give you some different colors. So that's gonna give you more of a blue. Here's more of a purple to blue. No, so you can sort of see how you could play with all of these. If you wanted to do that, I'm gonna go back to none. I should also be able to get photogenic here. That's another filter I like to use. See all and photogenic will give you some slightly different variations. So again, you could play with photogenic, make it a little lighter, a little darker, um, a little brighter. Some of these have some interesting color pop ones, but Again, like if I wanted to give it a faded look, I could go to fade, and that's just gonna give it more of that sort of old fashioned vintage faded look. I do have a retro antique style. You could go back up and get a really bright one there. That's the stark one. I could go with some warm colors or some cold colors. So you can just sort of see how clicking these will give you slightly different shades of everything. So you could play with that as well. So there's a lot of different ways that you could go ahead and then change up some of these different colors that you're working with. But right now, I like the way it is. This is probably what I would go with in terms of a shirt. And so I could go ahead, if I didn't wanna make any other changes to it, just title it, say Aloha to Kindness. Oops, spelled right and just go ahead and put gradient. And then this is ready to save. I can hit save, I can hit download. It's a PNG. Um, I'm gonna want a transparent background. I am gonna need um, just page two, so you can pick which page you're at. And so transparent background, page two, PNG, it's ready to go. I can click download and now it is ready to put on a shirt, a mug, a sticker, a postcard, a tank top. Remember, spring is coming. We're starting to decorate for spring now. Spring break is coming. So tank tops are gonna be really popular right now. Um, so anything that kind of reminds you of a uh, summer vacation, beach vacation, spring break, anything like that, that's a good thing to start working on right now. If you have any questions about this design or this technique or anything like that, go ahead, drop them in the comment section below. I do try to get back to them as quickly as I can. If anything was a little unclear, again, go ahead, let me know and I'll try to clarify it for you. Um, and I hope you guys found this video useful. I hope you guys are still, you know, coming up with some real fun, creative designs and getting some good sales. All right, I'll talk to you guys later. That's it for today's video. If you found this useful and would like to see more videos with helpful tips and tricks, be sure to hit like and subscribe and turn on your notifications so you don't miss any of the weekly videos. As always, keep growing and stay creative and we'll see you next time. Bye bye. <laughs>